give me the strength to stand for you when I don't want to hurt another for you open my mind to know your truth without doubt sing for both in the natural and in the spiritual realm there are messenger angels many times it's just a word that comes to you in the spirit and you pick it up but in the message the angel may have come and delivered that to you there are warring angels these are angels that are violent there are angels that can assist you in God's assignment for your life we just can't see them but they are there in the realm of the spirit to do things for us Greetings, thank you for tuning in to Living Strong today. Uh, we are doing an exciting series on angels on assignment. And uh, last, in our last episode, last telecast, uh, we did an introduction to angels. And uh, I hope uh, you are open to learning about angels and your, your mind is not closed as though it's a dangerous subject. Uh, you know, just because uh, people in church don't talk too much about angels, we shouldn't ignore it. Uh, like we mentioned last time, the Bible is full uh, of uh, talking about angels, right? From Genesis all the way to Revelation. We see angels doing all kinds of things, right? In the, from the Garden of Eden, protecting the tree of life, all the way to the book of Revelation, where we see them worshiping God. We see them coming with the armies of God, uh, executing judgment on the earth, and all kinds of things. God is uh, having, uh, has this innumerable hosts of angels that he engages and interestingly, the Bible says that angels are ministering spirits sent to minister for us who are the heirs of salvation. Like I mentioned in our earlier telecast, and I'll repeat that again, 
you know, we are very aware uh, some of, of some of the warnings uh, that the Bible gives us concerning angels. First of all, we do not worship angels, as it tells us in Colossians chapter 2. We do not engage in the worship of angels. And uh, we are also aware that Satan could tra- Satan transforms himself to an angel of light. So that means we have to test angelic uh, visitations and so on. And we will talk about that in an upcoming episode on how to test an angelic visitation to make sure it's not Satan appearing as an angel of light, but it's truly a holy angel of God sent from his presence, uh, bringing you a message and so on and so forth. You know, many of us have actually, as believers, have actually experienced uh, angelic uh, uh, deliverance or angelic work. Uh, maybe you haven't recognized it, but you know it's angels who have kept you safe. It's angels who have protected you, uh, uh, kept you from accidents that could have happened. And, and, and sometimes we are aware, there have been times I'm very aware, hey, that was definitely an angel of God that did that, that protected me. Otherwise, I would have been gone. But the angel of God was there that intervened. Or sometimes as simple as you waking up in the morning, you know, you set your alarm uh, for four to wake up at four o'clock and 3.50 you awaken. Uh, I I believe it's the angel of God waking me up at that that time because I had to do something. Uh, Even though I may have had my alarm and there's nothing wrong in using an alarm, but God preempts it and his angels are there to, uh, to do this for you. And so like this, you know, many of us are actually experiencing angels at work. It's just that we don't recognize it. And so we want to uh, alert us to this and also talk about from Scripture, what do we see that you and I can do to position ourselves so that we can avail ourselves of angelic activity. And also when we're ministering to people, when we're praying for others, how we can have angels be dispatched to assist those people who need uh, divine intervention and assistance. So what we want to talk about now Uh, is try to understand what angels do in our realm. Uh, This is simply to open up our heart and open our understanding and make us aware that these are the kinds of things that angels actually do in our realm. And all of these things are quoted from the Bible, meaning these are not things we make up in our minds. Uh, This is not fictitious things we're talking about or imaginary things or things that we've conjured up in our minds. We're just referencing what we have seen in Scripture as we talk about what angels do in our realm. And uh, 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 there are several things the Bible tells us. For instance, angels assist us. Uh, They help us uh, progress in an assignment that God has given to us or that we are going uh, about to fulfill. A very simple example we see is in Genesis chapter 24, verses 7 and 10, uh, when Abraham uh, commissions his servant, Eliezer, to go and find a bride for his son, Isaac. Now, you and I think about, wow, uh, this is something, you know, uh, I just have to figure out on my own. Uh, but very interestingly, in such an assignment, Abraham says that God will send his angel to help you. Look at verse 7. It says, The Lord God of heaven, who took me from my father's house and from the land of my family, who spoke to me and swore to me, saying, To your descendants I give this land. He will send his angel before you, and you shall take a wife for my son from there. Imagine, he, Eliezer, is being given this assignment to find a bride. But Abraham is saying, God will send an angel to help you get this job done. You know, uh, this may seem a very mundane, a very, you know, earthly kind of a task to do. But he's saying, angel is going to help you. And Eliezer recognizes that. He says in verse 40, But he said to me, The Lord before whom I walk will send his angel with you and prosper your way. And you shall take a wife for my son, for my family and my father's house. Eliezer recognizes that whatever has happened, the angel of God has been involved in that whole thing of him being able to find Rebecca for Isaac as a bride. Meaning, his angel did this. His angel set this up. I mean, why would Rebecca come to the well? Why would all this happen? There was an angel or maybe angels working to get all of this set up. So even in your life and mine, you know, whether we are doing something very small or something very big, angels assist us in our day-to-day tasks and in things that we are going to do, uh, going about doing in accordance, of course, in accordance to the word of God, in accordance to the will of God. They're not going to help you and me do things that are contrary to the purpose of God, 
But when we are going about doing the will of God for our lives, you can be assured that there are angels there to assist you. And you can also ask God for angelic assistance in the tasks you go about because they're there to assist us. Now, of course, there are many other scriptures which uh, I'm not able to quote for the uh, sake of brevity. But there are many other scriptures that talk to us about angels helping us or helping people or helping an entire community uh, on an assignment. Think, and I'll just make mention of this in Exodus 23, when it talks about God's people making their exodus from Egypt all the way into the land of promise. It says the angel of God was with them to take them into that place. So it wasn't, it's not only do we find angels helping an individual, but we find angels helping an entire company, an entire group of people, in this case, multitudes of people as they made their journey. So they work both ways. They are there to assist us. Um, Another thing we see in scripture is that angels bring messages to us. So when God wants to get a message to you, of course, the primary way is that God will speak to you by his word. He will speak to you through his written word. As you read the scriptures, God is speaking to you. Another very important way is God speaks to you and me by his Holy Spirit. The Spirit of God is in us and He speaks to us. But what we do find also in Scripture, both in the Old and in the New Testament, and even in the book of Acts, is that God uses angels to get a message to His people. And look at many examples. You know, when God wanted to warn, uh, want, wanted to encourage Joseph about the birth of Jesus, the angel of God spoke to Joseph uh, in a dream once, twice, saying, hey, don't be afraid to take Mary, your wife. Now, if you need to take the child, go to Egypt, protect the child. Uh, we, in, the, in the book of Acts, we see angels at work. An angel of God tells Philip, go down to Gaza. An angel of God tells Cornelius, you know, send word uh, and, and, and find this man called Peter and tell him to come. So you see, angels are giving messages uh, uh, to people in order to uh, carry out something which is aligned to the purpose of God. Or an angel comes to Paul in Acts 27 uh, and tells Paul, Paul, and now this Paul is on his journey in the ship with other people uh, on the way to Rome. They've hit a rough weather, but the angel of God comes to Paul and says, Paul, I want to bring you a message. God will protect you and the life of all of you on the ship. Not one person's life will be lost. So an angel brings that message. You know, uh, God could have spoken to Paul in some other way, maybe in a vision or a dream or directly by his Holy Spirit. But for some reason, God used an angel to bring this message to Paul. And, uh, and, and, and so angels bring messages to us. Now, how would angels communicate that message to us? I want to share this with us so that we can become aware. One, of course, they can speak to us audibly, like we see in certain instances in Scripture. You might hear an, a voice um, which is audible, meaning it could be physically audible or it could be uh, audible to your spiritual ears, but you hear uh, the voice of angels speaking. Uh, angels can influence our thoughts or they can put thoughts into our mind. Now you say, how can you prove that it's from Scripture? Well, think about the opposite. How does the devil tempt you and me? How do demons, how do evil spirits uh, tempt you and me? You know, you don't, none of us have seen the devil or his demons appear before us in a black suit with two horns and a pitchfork and saying, I'm the devil, I'm here to tempt you. That's not the way they tempt us. How do evil spirits tempt us? By intercepting our thoughts. They put in thoughts. They put in our pictures, imaginations, ideas, suggestions that come into our mind. And that's the way they engage with us. That's the way they try to tempt us. So... If evil spirits can do that, definitely angelic spirits, angelic beings can do the same thing. So that's one way that uh, they influence. They influence our thoughts. They put thoughts into our mind. Uh, and so sometimes our idea pops in your mind or you're reminded of something. Well, it could be the Holy Spirit doing that for you, or it could be an angel of God who's around you who's speaking that to you. And it just comes into your mind. And it's a good thought. It's something reminding you. It's a helpful thought. It's a thought that will, uh, you know, help you in some way. Sometimes you're looking for a direction and you get a thought, turn right. Well, that's an angel of God giving you instruction. Turn right. You just go with that thought and, 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 and then you're, you reach your destination. Another way that they can speak to us is that they speak uh, and we hear with the ears of our spirit. So uh, it, it's, a, it, it's, a, it's a word that goes directly into your spirit and you pick it up. They can also visit us in dreams. 
uh, just like we saw in Matthew 1 and Matthew 2 uh, and other places in Scripture, we see angels of God appearing to people in dreams and giving them messages. So these are some ways that angels can speak to us. Angels also protect and deliver us. And this is such a big and important function of angels. We see this, many scriptures on this. Psalm 34 verse 7 says, The angel of the Lord encamps all around those who fear him and delivers them. So think about this. The angel of God encamps. Encamp means to fully surround. Your front, your back, your left, your right. You're fully surrounded by the angel of God. And he deliver, the angels of God deliver those. That means they protect. They bring salvation. They will stop the works of the enemy. The angels of God deliver us. Psalm 91, which we are very familiar with, verses 11 and 12. The Bible says, He will give His angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. In their hands they will bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. So the angels of God are there to keep us in all our ways. Of course, implicit there is that our, that our ways are in obedience to God. Obviously, if we go off in disobedience, go off in rebellion, go off in sin, the angels of God are not obligated necessarily to protect us at that time. But when we are walking in the ways of God, in obedience to God, they are there to protect us and to keep us. You know, think about some, some significant biblical examples. In Daniel 3, we read about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego being thrown into a furnace of fire. And what does Nebuchadnezzar see? He sees a fourth man. He sees the angel of God coming in to protect these three. You know, and they're supernaturally protected. Think about Daniel. We read about this in Daniel 6. He was thrown into a den of lions. And what was Daniel said? He says there in verse 22, he says, My God sent his angel and shut the lion's mouths so that they've not, they've not hurt me because I was found innocent before him. So Daniel recognized an angel of God came, closed the mouth of all these lions. They could do no harm to Daniel. So angels of God that are protecting us, they're delivering us, they're keeping us in all of our ways. So another thing that uh, angels do for us is angels deliver answers to our prayers. That means you and I are praying to God, you are asking God for something, uh, you know, and God sends angel messengers to bring that answer to you. It could be an answer in the form of a message. It could be the ans an answer in something that has to happen in your circumstance, in your situation. Uh, some, a, a great example is that of Daniel. You know, Daniel in Daniel chapter 9, verses 20 to 23, it says, Now while I was speaking, praying and confessing my sin and the sin of my people Israel, and presenting my supplication before the Lord my God, for the holy mountain of my God, yes, while I was speaking in prayer, the man Gabriel, whom I had seen in the vision at the beginning, being caused to fly swiftly, reached me about the time of the evening offering, and he informed me and talked with me and said, O Daniel, I have now come forth to give you skill to understand. At the beginning of your supplications, the commandment went out, and I have come to tell you, for you are greatly beloved, therefore consider the matter and understand the vision. So here you have a scenario here where Daniel is praying, he's asking God, saying, God, I want to understand the meaning of this vision. I want to understand the meaning of what I'm reading and what, what I've heard. And so as he starts the prayer, as his prayer, Gabriel is saying, at the beginning of your supplication, meaning when you started praying, the commandment went out, meaning God said, Gabriel, go. So you can imagine how an angel is being assigned to answer that prayer of Daniel. So uh, when you pray, God is dispatching angels in response to your prayer to carry out what you're praying for. In this particular case, Daniel wanted understanding. He wanted to understand a vision, understand what the meaning of the, all those things were, the prophetic words. And so God sent an angel to bring that to him. So angels deliver answers to our prayers. You know, so you and I can pray uh, for ourselves, for other people, and we can specifically ask God, send your angel. And there's nothing wrong in doing that because you're asking God, who is the Lord of the hosts. God has his angels at his disposal. Angels listen to the command of God. Angels hearken to the voice of his word. Angels do his pleasure. So there's nothing wrong for you and me to pray and say, God, send your angel to do this or do that or uh, intervene in that situation. And God will dispatch them in response to our prayers. 
Angels also assist in evangelism. That's a very interesting thing we see in the book of Acts, that although we as people have been commissioned to go preach the gospel, the angels are assess- assisting us. They are, we see them do two kinds of things. They send us to people in order to share the gospel with them. They set that up. This is what happened in the case of Philip. Uh, in Acts 8 and verse 26, it says, An angel of the Lord spoke to Philip, saying, Arise and go toward the south along the road, which goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. This is desert. Now think about this. An angel, an angel is telling Philip, I want you to go to that place. Why? Because in that place, he's going to meet this Ethiopian uh, man, uh, this man from Ethiopia who's working for the queen of Ethiopia. But who's giving Philip that instruction? An angel. So an angel can give us instructions in order to help us in evangelism, in order to help us get to people who are ready to hear the gospel. And very interestingly, further down in the same passage, you find that the Holy Spirit completes the instruction. It tells us in verse 29, Then the Spirit, the Holy Spirit said to Philip, Go near and overtake this chariot. Now, it's a question that makes us wonder, why didn't the Holy Spirit speak directly to Philip and say, Philip, go down to Gaza. No, uh, it, it didn't happen that way. The Holy Spirit sent an angel, an angel to bring the message saying to Philip, go to Gaza. Once Philip is there, you find the Holy Spirit saying, Philip, get into that chariot. So there is this uh, synchronization. There is this co-working. The Holy Spirit is sending an angel, the Spirit of God, working together with an angel to help us in evangelism. We also find angels sending people to us. So you read about this in Acts 10, when this, uh, about Cornelius. An angel of God comes to Cornelius and says, Cornelius, I want you to send for Peter, a man called Simon Peter, who, who, um, uh, uh, who, who is uh, lodging. He gives him an address. He says in Joppa, he's staying with uh, a man named Simon, who is all a tanner, bright by the sea. You go there and you call him uh, and tell him to come and speak to you. So now an angel is speaking to an unbeliever, an unsaved person, telling him to call for somebody who can give him a message. And, uh, and the Holy Spirit tells Peter, Peter, I want you to go on this assignment. You see again, the Holy Spirit working with angels. And now angels are helping us in evangelism. So we've talked about a few things today on how angels assist us, how angels are working with us. Uh, we will continue this uh, on the next episode. We'll explore a little bit more further on what angels do in our realm. But what are, the reason we are looking at these things in Scripture is because I want you to open your heart and mind and, and, and say, God, if this is what the Bible is saying angels do, why don't I just avail myself of angelic activity and angelic assistance in my life? I can pray to the Lord of hosts. That means I could pray to the one who's got all these angels at his disposal and ask him to dispatch angels to help me. You are not violating God's word because God's word tells us that his angels are ministering spirits sent to minister to us who are the heirs of salvation. So when you make that kind of a prayer, you're in perfect alignment with the word of God and all you're doing is you're availing yourselves of angels who've been sent or been assigned to assist us in various things. So, how do you apply what you heard today? When you go about something in your life, and you've got a task to do, and you're going about something, you say, Father, I just ask that you'll send angels along with me. Let them prepare the way, let them clear the traffic. That's very important. Oh, God, let them, you know, whatever you need to do. God, just send angels. Let them help me. Let them assist me. God, help me to get there on time. God, help me to get this done. Send angels to assist me. There is absolutely nothing wrong. That's a very valid prayer to pray. When you're praying, when you're out on evangelism, say, God, send, send angels to help me share the gospel. Send angels, Lord, to bring people into my life who need to hear the gospel. They will do that work. They'll set you up. There's nothing wrong in praying like that. So you ask for angels to, uh, to, uh, to work in your life. And as you pray, say, God, send angels to bring answer to this prayer. That's a valid prayer to pray. And ask God for angels to get that job done, whatever you're praying, to get that job done. Ah, that's a valid prayer. And you can begin to engage angels. 
and things you do. So I trust that the program today encourages you uh, from the Bible to avail yourself of angels that have been assigned for your life. Pray, ask the Lord, and He will do it. As we, before, we close and before we close the program today, I want to pray with you, and I'm going to intentionally ask that God dispatch angels in your circumstance to deliver, to work miracles, to set things up for your life, to intervene in your life circumstances, and, and, and cause things to happen in your life, in the natural realm. And I want you to receive that prayer and say, yes, God, send your angels, your ministering spirits, even as we pray. Let's do that. Father, I pray for those watching and listening. And I ask in the name of Jesus, Father, according to your word, send your angels into their life situations. God, for those who are struggling financially, let angels cause provision to come. Let angels work in their circumstances to meet their financial needs. For those who are looking for a job or a promotion in the job, dispatch your angels, Lord, to cause them, enable them to get a job, a good job. Uh, dispatch angels to cause promotion to come in their workplace. God, I pray you will dispatch angels for those who are facing demonic attacks. Let the works of the enemy be brought to nothing. Send forth your warring angels, your ministering spirits into their circumstances to break off every oppressive work of the enemy and, and, and release them from it, Father. I ask for these things. I ask for increased angelic activity in our lives. And according to your word, and I do this in Jesus' name, amen, amen. You know, before we close, we really want to give people an opportunity uh, to come to know Jesus Christ. The Bible tells us that Jesus Christ died for our sins. He was buried, he rose up again, and he's alive today. And he's waiting to be your savior, the one who saves you and me. He's waiting to bring us into this relationship with God and make us children of God. All we've got to do is to call on the name of Jesus, asking him to be our Lord and Savior. And if you've never done that, I want to encourage you to do that right where you are. Do it now. Call upon Jesus. Ask him to be your Savior. And until next time, remember, live life the Jesus way.